President Trump successfully jawboning the markets today after suggesting rates should stay lower and that the dollar's strength hurts the U.S. on trade. On Twitter, he reiterated comments that he made to CNBC that China, the EU, and others are manipulating their currencies and interest rates lower, while the U.S. is raising rates while the dollar gets stronger every day, taking away the U.S.'s big competitive edge. The president continuing to say that tightening now hurts all that we have done and that the U.S. should instead be able to recapture what it lost. His comments had the desired effect in the currency market, sending the dollar index down nearly 1%, and as one investor put it, showing China that two can play that game. This, of course, coming after the People's Bank of China moved the midpoint rate on the yuan for the biggest one-day devaluation this week in two years, and after China's trade surplus in June touched a record. The Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin just spoke to Reuters from the G20 in Buenos Aires, saying, a strong dollar is still important for the U.S. in the long term and that he is closely monitoring yuan weakness for manipulation. Devaluation is just one of the tools that China is using to soften the blow of tariffs. China is also lowering reserve requirements for banks, freeing up capital for lending and backstopping certain debt purchases. President Trump told CNBC that he feels empowered here at home to keep up the trade fight thanks to the cushion from the stock market. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. Is there a time when you know the expression, we're playing with the bank's money, right? We're up almost 40 percent. Although with no talks on the horizon, it appears the U.S. and China could be prepared for a protracted trade fight. International finance officials in Beijing say talk of a resolution is focused on the end of the year, Melissa, potentially after midterm elections. Kayla <laughs> Mnuchin had um, said that they would issue, they would examine whether or not China is devaluing in the next uh, Treasury currency report. Any reading on when that would be released? Um, well, it is uh, usually released on an annual or semi-annual basis. In the past, the Treasury Department has declined to actually uh, list <clears throat> China as a currency manipulator in that report, as the president said on the campaign trail that he would. They do talk about volatility that is inherent in the currency market because of economies like China's that do not function uh, as market economies or capitalistic economies, but they have uh, walked just up to the line but not crossed it insofar as actually saying that China has been manipulating its currency. All right. Kayla, thank you. Kayla Tausche in Washington for us. So the president says he is playing with the bank's money, to use his terms. Uh, he's doubling down on the trade war, doubling down on the Fed. But the market today barely budged. Why not, Tim? Well, so if, if the pressure's on the Fed and the pressure's down on the dollar, you've taken that two major ingredients, I think, for people to be concerned. A stronger dollar is, is certainly going to be a, an issue for multinationals. It's certainly a, a flight to quality often, if that's really what it is. But less Fed equals better conditions for markets. I also think earnings, um, when, you, when you layer that on top, it's a very, very solid fundamental story. Guidance has been better than, than expected, I think, on the back of what people thought was going to be awful trade. And I think there's some trade fatigue, even though I, I am of the view that there there is a lot of potential uh, detrimental follow through from the trade <clears throat> discussions equals more. I think markets right now are focused on less Fed and I think positioning right now is, is, is actually not off sides. So less Fed and a weaker dollar trumps, if you will, uh, the threat of tariffs on $505 billion worth of goods, a full-blown trade war? So I, I think that people aren't pricing in a full-blown trade war because that's not what we have just yet. People still think the <laughs> rhetoric is worse than the reality of this. But having said all that, I think earnings are a big thing. We're going moving forward. Earnings are going to be great. I don't know if they're going to be spectacular, but they're going to be just, just good enough to keep this moving forward. And I do think that China will blink, as I'm choking. I do think China will blink. So if you look at 500 compared to 130, what's that going to look like for us? We're their biggest client. So look at it that way. Don't, they're not going to be devaluating. They did that in 2015 or to the extent they did in 2015. They're not going to be selling treasuries. It hurts them just as much as it hurts us. And they're not, they don't well, they want to market. They, they are our want, biggest client there, aren't they? They, they don't want it. Well, yeah, but what are they going to do with it? I, I agree with you, Stephen. I actually think also they want to keep their currency stable, but yeah. I'll let these guys talk. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. I think time. they have to keep their currency stable. I think that they, they are, their, their objective right now, their long-term goal essentially, is make sure, to make sure they have, you know, they don't have a flight risk or capital leaving. I mean, coming out, financial controls are super important to them. So they start to devalue the currency. Capital is going to fly out of their system. And also you look at the, the fact that they want the yuan to be a global currency, and too much fluctuation obviously prohibits that. But 
I think the bigger news this week, in my opinion, is really the EU-Japan sort of structure and a free trade agreement. That's a very important thing that I think was announced and sort of overlooked by the markets. Yeah, as far as the dollar is concerned, if you look at the Dixie, the dollar index, you know, it spent the better part of 2015, 2016, right around 95. That's where we are right now. Now, what's interesting about late 2016 into 17, after Trump was elected, all these risk assets that, you know, thought that would attract capital to the U.S. because it seemed like investors globally liked this uh, transition, they all rallied, right? So the dollar made multi-year highs at levels that it hadn't been. So we spent the last year going down. I mean, the Dixie went from 105, what, to 87 in April. When you think about what that means for corporate earnings, okay, so we had this declining dollar all of 2017. That is obviously a tailwind for multinationals. Now what we have is we had Q1 earnings that actually got the benefit of it, and now Q2 earnings and guidance going forward is going to be a bit mixed. I think it cancels each other out. I just don't think the dollar at 95 over the last few Nothing years means anything. means anything. Well, so we went down 14 percent, as you talked about, from essentially the peak through 2017 to where we bottomed in January, and we took a 50 percent retracement right to resistance. So right. this level makes sense for me. Here's the other side of that, though. If the dollar weakens, um, I think you actually put that much more pressure on prices. I mean, we, we have been talking about inflation. Every Fed survey we hear talks about input prices. And the good thing about the stronger dollars, that was going to mitigate trade tariffs. It was going to make it tougher on the consumer, but ultimately they were going to get a little something back. But what happens if the corporate tax cut going from 35 to 21 mitigates any of these tariff war, uh, tariff trade concerns with the corporations because we're all worried what, what, about but, it. But what about the other way, Steve? What if it just cancels it out? Right. No, you know could, right. you just don't get but the benefit. That's, that's what mitigated. I know, but well, that's what the president's saying. saying. I know, yeah. but what I'm saying is what's what right. he's complaining about. But what's priced into the market right here, I think, is for that we start getting this tailwind of 21 percent corporate right. tax that's rate right. and all the stuff that comes with it, right? The capital investment and all that sort of stuff. And that's the stuff in the guidance I think is really interesting. I think for the back half of the year, we're going to see just a lot of squishiness on that because yeah, but, there's but, a but lot of uncertainty. That's the point is that it does neutralize it. So I don't, I'm not arguing with you. I'm saying that's right. the so exact point. So back to point. playing with so the house money, though, if there's a comment. personal tax cut. Right. But now if there's more money, put <clears throat> Larry Kudlow sort of alluded to it. There's no, there's no, Did you do me already so no, early on a Friday? Can we get a split screen tax? Can we get a split screen tax? Dude, 2.0 coming. So where do we stand if it does, if it does sort of, if we are playing with house money and we've priced in all this growth, et cetera, from tax cuts, whatnot, and then we peel some of that back because of the effects of a trade war and, and so on. Where does that leave us? Well, I think you have to go after stocks that, first of all, have been beaten up at least in the last six weeks by a stronger dollar. And you have to go after those stocks that also have attached a trade war already to their back. And I would go at the airlines. I would go at the autos. I would go at the industrials. And I would say, you know, GM, which reports on Wednesday of this week, is, is a very interesting story. I would look at the airlines, which are, are priced for an economy that's in recession. Um, I would go after those stocks that actually at least have been caught in the crossfire. Yeah, just, you know, Fang, I know everyone loves Fang. It's really hard. The steepness of these rallies over the last couple I, of months I don't. Is, oh, is just ridiculous. OK, so what I would say is I like Facebook the fact that Fang thing. rallied no matter what the geopolitical risk, what right. the dollar was doing all you know over the last few years. If you get a meaningful correction at some point in Q3 and a lot of those names and it just seems like kind of it's overdone, that's when you get back in those things. And then Apple is the other one. I know Carter's going to come on later. and He talked about maybe a retracement back to 180. If you can get Apple this summer at 180 before the refresh, in the fall. What's the difference well, on that? Like, You're talking about think, 10 bucks on a $200 yeah, stock. Yeah, but I, mean, you know, you know, I, mean, I don't, I think, I think people invest in Apple in the long term. I think you also have this capital return know, but, story. But Tim, we, of course, you know, it's in all the time. You love Amazon here. Do I buy it here? You know, it, it makes new all time highs every day. But we've had but, sell offs in all these stocks 10, 15% over but, the last six months. And that's when you have to do it when everyone else wants to get out of it. Right, when they're bought. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, in, and you're going to laugh at this, Dan, the safety issue, the safety <laughs> trade of some of these things. It's not going to do you, though. There's an understanding of their, of their revenue something. growth and their earnings growth and their tra trajectories that those are on. And I think investors have their arms around that. So from a safety perspective, I mean, I really do think people are gravitating to the names like you put Facebook in there, the Amazons in there. Even Is Facebook Google a safety trade? I think if look at Facebook numbers. Facebook Is it numbers. still? At 210? Face, Facebook numbers ratcheted up higher today by a couple different firms. I look at it and say there's confidence in their earnings growth. There's confidence in that at least going out a year or two. The, the only thing, to, to your point, is a safety trade. The only things that have rallied and continue to rally yeah. are, the, are the large cap tech names. And I think the most interesting part yeah. about this is going to be the China large cap tech. Is that going to be the one that actually is the surprise trade? Are we worried about, uh, about Alibaba? Are we worried about uh, No, ID? because are I do think that's going to be the biggest upside pop.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.